Most of we have absences and people are not here to celebrate. Uh, we're going to back up and grab a couple of Jan uh, December that we might have missed, like uh, Mr. Chip Vale. I know I saw him. Oh, right here. Yeah, I think he might have had a birthday somewhere back here in December 27th, maybe. Yes, sir. Yeah, all right. We're not going to call you to ask how many, but happy birthday. Thank you. All right. And Mr. Chris Justice, he didn't make it with us today. He had a birthday on January 4th. I yeah, see Chris coming happy birthday. And uh, that just to make sure we got all of our December uh, events covered. Uh, Mike and Lily had a, a wedding anniversary on the 22nd. And Bradley Joe, yeah, happy anniversary there. And uh, my buddy Ken's wife, uh, Sally, had a birthday January 1st. So we've got a few there. And Miss Gail Stenzel, uh, I don't see her this morning. But she had a club anniversary of four years, so congratulate Gail when you see her uh, at the end of the last year. So we're caught up now, Mr. President, through the year, and we'll be pressing forward now with uh, 2020. Thank you, Rick. Appreciate it, bud. You uh, Karen, Carrie, you have an announcement about the card project? Yeah. Yeah, so um, for those of you who have forgotten or who never knew, CART, the Blue Buckets on your table, is Coins for Alzheimer's Research Trust. They give 100% of everything donated. Every penny goes to Alzheimer's Research. And um, we are doing a fundraiser to support CART on January 23rd. It is a cornhole tournament. The cost is a, a minimum $40 donation to CART and then $5 per person to cover our cost. That also gives you one drink ticket. So uh, it's a great cause. It's minimal investment. We'd love for you to come out and have fun with us January 23rd at Gibbs Brewery. There's flyers on your table. Is this a single or a team? It's, it's team, but if you're a single, you don't have a teammate, we will hook you up with a teammate. So okay. just let us know if you want to play. Fantastic. Okay. That's great. I didn't realize that it's like now an actual event. You might have seen on the ESPN. Uh, <laughs> 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 it kind of shocked me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 My sister said, well, just look it up on the internet. So she talked to, you know, Cornhole, and it was not at all. But, um, <laughs> but uh, at any rate, um, yeah, we have a, 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 a special announcement. Um, there are a couple of members that have worked through the list and dispose, can dispose of their red badges today. Uh, that's right. But they've been to a board meeting, they've done um, a service project, um, they, gosh, they've done all kinds of wonderful things and to really get indoctrinated into the club and learn everybody and, and start making connections. Uh, so Cheryl, would you come forward and also John Holland? All right. No, uh, You got to pay attention, man. Serve this. That's right. Very congratulations, uh, both of you guys. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you're part of the club. You bet. Um, Mr. Rotary says this is our future president. Uh, I'm sure Cheryl will be glad to take also at any rate. Uh, I'm so proud of these guys. And uh, this is kind of why. Uh, our club is really a growing and vibrant club is because of the members that we're attracting and we're attracting the right members because of the guys that are doing the recruiting. So thank you guys uh, for bringing your friends and for bringing special people like these uh, that will really make our club and, and the, our community so much better. So thank you very much. Other announcements from the floor. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, this is the, the last football pool of the season. Um, you know, it spanned two decades. Um, it took me a long time to get these, uh, get these uh, scored, and uh, it was really kind of interesting. I'm not gonna, I want to thank everybody for playing. You know, I kind of view a lottery ticket for some of you on the justified as a dollar's worth of dreams. 
I hope that each time that you played the football pool, you had a sense that you were dreaming for the glory and for a significant prize if you want. And, um, and I hope that that will continue in the future. I want to thank Dennis for uh, sharing the responsibilities. I want to thank all the people who donated uh, prizes this year. It really helps a lot. And uh, this week we had, I'm not going to mention all the, the runners up because actually there was a, a good bit of distance between the, uh, the, the, the winners on both and, and everybody else. On the, uh, on the lower end, uh, Chris Jackson, uh, <laughs> phenomenal performance. <laughs> it was, in fact, the low of the year. Uh, uh, seven right, 18 Ooh. wrong. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping to have a really big hat that would cover your whole face. <laughs> so, this will have to do. All right. <laughs> it's, 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 at 21, that's right, a triple lap. Uh, 21, right. Mike Conrad. Great. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Right. Mike, fantastic job in the football pool this year. Uh, I think we can say this is just the best year we've had in the football pool. Uh, and, and you guys did a fantastic job, Dennis. Also great. Um, a real quick little thing uh, before we do happy dollars. I've got a special treat, a kind bar, that I stole from my wife. For anybody that's got cooler socks than mine this morning. Oh. All right, let's see them. Let's see them. These are uh, Santa drinking a Mai Tai on the beach in Jamaica. <laughs> All right, well, let's see you. Go ahead, bro. You got go ahead, go ahead. I, I don't wear these socks at all. And uh, <coughs> I got these for Christmas morning. And that, that I said, yeah, they look like they look like Molly, our dog. And they said, it is your dog. <laughs> Coins, but I don't know if I'm going to get y'all. But, uh, but anyway, uh, this is what do, what do y'all think? Guitar. 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 While you're standing. All right, happy That's dollars. <laughs> Pin up demand, as they say. Oh, well, hello, girl. <laughs> That's my happy dollar for um, that I'm going to um, Disney World on Saturday. All right. Okay, um, I got two happy dollars. The first is for our president, Walt Howe. I want to thank you, Walt, for letting Trotter Brothers do your point in your office. And then secondly, over the uh, holidays, James and Teresa Edwards came over to eat dinner with Betty and I, and he wanted me to give everybody his best and say happy to you. hockey fans there are in this room, let alone junior hockey fans, but last Sunday the Canadian juniors beat the Russians 5-4 to four to win the world championship. It's the first time they've been had the gold since 2008. So. Wow. 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 Have two here. Uh, Wilder dropped his uh, application for MBA school on top of the Forestry and Environmental Management School. So just notice I'll be more conservative in my donations for another year. <laughs> and more importantly, this is for Enduring Gratitude, which is a charity that I and six other guys started 12 years ago. We take uh, veterans. It used to be only wounded veterans, but now it's all veterans who will apply. Uh, EnduringGratitude.org. Need to raise some money. I got to sponsor this T-shirt. It's long sleeve. We'll put our 400 of them. Give out at least 350 to 375. Every volunteer gets one. Thousand bucks for your logo on the back. Gate City Rotary. 
will be close and if, uh, if we make a donation or get a donation from a 12 grants, I'll make up the difference if it doesn't match it. But anyway, but uh, Raymond James is on here. We've got other people. So if you'd be interested, uh, these go out. It's a very nice, it's a gilded, it's a very nice t-shirt. Please contact me. I'll send out an email later on. The veterans love it. It's a great day. Thank you. Well, it's 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 a, I'm sorry, it's February 8th. I should have wow. said that. And uh, we're looking for volunteers and we're looking for veterans. So if you're a veteran, please sign up as a veteran. Come out. You'll be honored beyond belief. Breakfast, lunch. Uh, we're going to throw 600 pheasants off the tower. Uh, we're going to shoot sporting clays. Pheasants? They're going to set live pheasants. Well, we tried the pheasants. We tried the pheasants. They make too big a thug. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great day, and, and they're indoor jobs or outdoor jobs. Who here has volunteered or been doing during gratitude? Yeah, so fun time, big thing. Yeah, a great deal. Thank you, and it's a great service to our veterans. Thank you. I just had a very good closing with uh, Chris Justice, who's unfortunately not here, but it was looking impossible, but he made it happen. All right. I just want to say um, thanks to my Uber driver yesterday. I had the best, well, I have two cars and I have older cars. And I feel like they're in the shop every other week for some reason. I'm, so I took my, I had to take my car in for breaks, but I had this fabulous <coughs> ride to the office and I don't even know what it is what it is, AMG, Mercedes, something. But anyway, thanks to Chip Person, he gave me a ride in <laughs> I felt like I was a fat That's your curious. <laughs> Do we have your phone number? <laughs> you should, it's on the website. <laughs> on the website, okay, got that. Well, I have, uh, actually, I have $5. Um, when you get to be my age, you sort of start thinking about, what your legacy in life is going to be. You know, what are people going to remember you for? What contribution that you're going to make to the world? And so I started thinking about, you know, what does the world need more of? You know, what? And real estate agent. <laughs> so, so I took the real estate course. I'm a bona fide real estate agent. <laughs> somebody who will hire me to do commercial real estate so wow. so I'm the newest real estate agent I passed that and and I, I have to admit I have to apologize to all the real estate agents that I thought were sort of dumb because you cannot be dumb and pass this right. it was, it was not so uh, anyway I'm doing, uh, working with Mike Fowler with Greensburg commercial property hey, have you run this through the rotary classification yeah, yeah. Are you still being our club yeah maybe not so uh, yeah plus try have one happy all right I'm just in, just inspired by that beautiful backhanded compliment or insult to all the real estate. Yes, yeah, yeah. I did. Yes, I did. I did. It was totally intentional. <laughs> Just be glad he didn't become an attorney. <laughs> Or is still, right? because, you know, speaking of getting older, you know, Grandpappy was uh, telling me that uh, he said, you know, he said getting older is just is just really weird. He said, you know, one day you're young and everything is just fun and games, and the next day you're turning down the radio in your car so you can see better. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Buster. Uh, we do still have some perfect attendance buttons for last year for anybody that has not collected their buttons because they weren't here. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. Uh, ironically as that is, so see Steve after the meeting and you uh, had perfect attendance last year and have not collected your button. Okay, Tony's going to introduce our speaker. Well, good morning everybody. Uh, we're going to hear from uh, Emily McCollum who is with the Weaver Foundation and also volunteers um, with the Guilford Education Alliance. Um, as well as Julia Osborne, um, who is uh, with A Simple Gesture, um, also about um, the Education Alliance. Obviously, um, speaking for myself, this is a super important um, partnership here in Greensboro um, with five boys who are uh, in or going to be in school 
uh, you know, our uh, education opportunities uh, for our younger folk is uh, super important. So thank you all so much for being here today and talk to us. Before we get started, didn't you guys win that barbecue cook-off? <laughs> Uh, well, that was some fantastic barbecue, so I don't know who cooked it, but that was delicious. It was dessert. Dessert. Oh, well, it was delicious dessert, too. It was delicious. Here we go. Thank you so much for having us here today. Um, as Tony said, my name is Emily McCollum. I work with the Weaver Foundation, and if you know the Weaver Foundation or the Weaver family, you know that we don't really enjoy spending a lot of time talking about ourselves, but really love lifting up the partners that we have the opportunity to work with. And Guilford Education Alliance is one of those. I've had the opportunity to volunteer with Guilford Education Alliance on their program leadership team. And also, like Tony, I have kids in the Guilford County school system and really appreciate what the educators are doing for my children and for all of their classmates and the 73,000 students that we have throughout our district. Good morning. Thanks for having us today. Um, biscuits and gravy are a great way to start the day, any day. Um, I, my name is Julia Osborne. I'm a retired educator from Georgia, where I was a, a district and school level leader um, in Gwinnett County Public Schools, which is in the largest district in Georgia. So um, if you, I had the great good fortune of moving to Greensboro, where I have absolutely fallen in love. And I'm lucky to spend my a good portion of my time advocating for public schools. So I thank you guys for um, your interest in public schools because it is vital to the community. As we know, great communities have great schools. So when you look around the country at places that are thriving, um, the, where the economy is good, where people are sharing in the wealth, without exception, those places there are good public schools. So at GEA, we are committed to maximizing support for Guilford County Schools so that all of our children thrive and are prepared for the future. We're focused on building a vibrant public school system that develops talent and attracts jobs and families to our community, and then we'll all thrive as a result. We believe that education is everyone's business. 75% of the residents in Guilford County do not have school age children right now. But we know that the state of our schools impact their lives too. It impacts property values, safety and security in neighborhoods, the quality of our workforce. When we invest in our schools, we all yield the dividends. We get a great ROI because of that we believe we all need to take responsibility for the success of our students. We know that supported educators can best support students. So at GEA, we focus our efforts on the support for educators and leaders across the whole district. So Emily and I are keep banding about we, and you may wonder who is we? We are Guilford Education Alliance. We are an independent nonprofit. We are separate from the school system and we are completely funded by private donations. The superintendent of schools and the chair of the Board of Education serve on our board of directors, as do the heads of High Point and Greensboro Chambers of Commerce, um, as well as a, ver a variety of other community leaders. Some of our largest funders are listed here. You may see some folks you recognize. We receive gifts and grants and donations of supplies from individuals, churches, civic organizations, and small and mid-sized businesses. <coughs> and we have a large network of active volunteers who guide and support our work. We are truly an alliance. <coughs> So the question is, what does this alliance actually do? We build critical school community partnerships by providing opportunities for community leaders to engage and support with educators and students. We do this with programs like this one today and others like Principal for a Day, our annual education summit, and also community reader days where you have the opportunity to go into a school and, and read with a classroom of students. 
We encourage you to step inside a school, talk to an educator, to get to understand what is going on in our schools today. We also curate information from local, state, and national <coughs> experts to help you answer questions and understand the dynamics impacting our students in schools. We share this through our e-newsletters <coughs> and our website along with our social media channels. We also invest in future-focused strategic school initiatives with private sector funding and seed money. Initiatives like early and middle colleges, we, uh, rewards for excellent teachers and principals, and professional development for teachers and strategic district planning. We also advocate for strong investment in Guilford County Schools and on other critical issues impacting GCS educators, students, and families. We advocate to and on behalf of the community to build broad-based support for public education and to influence public officials and decision makers. Strategic advocacy led to three consecutive years of increases in county funding for after a six-year decline. Education can be complicated, and we get that. But GEA's Teacher Supply Warehouse offers an easy and immediate way to make an impact. The average teacher spends between $600 and $1,000 of their own money each year on supplies for their classroom. And honestly, in some cases, that number is low. The goal of the Teacher Supply Warehouse is to offset that burden by offering GCS teachers new and gently used supplies at no cost. Each time a GCS teacher shops at the warehouse, they leave with an average of $150 worth of supplies. Everything from new supplies like pencils, glue sticks, and paper, to gently used supplies like fabric samples, desktop organizers, envelopes, and more. That visit only costs GEA an average of $64.08 per teacher. GEA is able to double your donation by using wholesale purchasing, community supply donations, and committed volunteers. Last year, thanks to the generosity of our community, the warehouse hosted 3,000 teacher visits. That equals more than $450,000 worth of supplies in Guilford County School classrooms. My part again. <laughs> so to talk a little bit more about our schools, we're actually gonna have a little quiz. So the first thing that I need everyone to do is just raise your hand, right or left. Okay, you passed the first test. Good job. Okay, so for this question, the first one you'll see up here, there are more than blank public school districts in the United States. Look at it a moment. 2,000, 14,000, or 45,000? How many A's? How many people think we have 2,000 in our... United States, okay. What about 14,000? How many B's do we have? Okay, some about some of the room. What about 45,000? Okay, so our A's and B, I mean our B's and C's, the answer is actually B. So give yourself a pat on the back, those of you who answer B. There are more than 14,000 districts in the U.S. 7,000 of those districts actually have less than 1,000 students less than some of our Gopher County School High Schools. So just imagine that. Each of those districts has a Board of Education, a superintendent to oversee fewer students than we, ha than we have at schools like Grimsley, Page, High Point Central, and Dudley. Now, for the next question. GCS is the blank largest school district in the United States. Okay, how many people think it's A, 47th largest in the United States? We've got some A's. What about 200th? Anybody? 200 B's? Okay. What about C, the thousandth largest in our country? Anybody? Okay, so most people were thinking either A or B. The answer is actually A. <laughs> Guilford County Schools is the 47th largest district. Pretty amazing. We have more than 73,000 students and over 10,000 employees. All right, so true or false, question three. GCS is larger than Boston, San Francisco, San Antonio, Seattle, and Atlanta. Just holler it out. What do you think? True or false? 
That's true. true. <clears throat> That's true. Guilford County Schools is larger than those districts. And last question, true or false, another true or false. GCS is the 10th largest district in North Carolina. True or false, Holler. You're right, that is false. We're the third largest <laughs> district in North Carolina. So, I hope everybody did okay. Did any of those facts surprise you as you think about it and as you think about the task that our educators have before them that we're entrusting them with? So let's dive in a little bit deeper. So there's some other really important pieces of information. <coughs> Guilford County Schools has a $767 million budget. It's the largest government entity in our county. We tend to think of a school district as smaller than the county or the city, but our district has a bigger budget and more staff, a larger transit system than either of the large cities in our county or the county itself. And something really critical in our context is that Guilford County Schools is the second largest employer, just a few hundred less than Cone Health. We hope that there will be a day when we have much larger employers here, but now, being at the top of the organizational food chain means that Guilford County Schools is a huge economic and cultural driver in our county in ways that school systems in other places are not. Every day, 73,000 students attend 125 schools across our county. And it's not just size and scope that matter. There are lots of great things happening in Guilford County Schools. We have several nationally recognized <coughs> choice schools in our district offering excellent programs in the arts, career and technical education, advanced academics, early college, and language immersion. Now a school's core business is teaching and learning, right? And, and we measure their effectiveness in student achievement. So particularly exciting is the academic progress students are making under the new strategic plan. Guilford County Schools has a record high graduation rate, 89.2%. That's 5% higher than the national average. And over the past decade, Guilford County Schools has cut the gap in graduation rates between black and white students in half. And one more thing to note, in 2019, for the first time in a decade, elementary and middle school Guilford County School students scored higher on state tests in every subject and every grade. And it's important that the increases were shown across all major racial, ethnic, and student demographic groups. Let's just pause for a moment and celebrate that success. If you see a principal or an educator connected to our schools, please thank them for the work that they are doing. They have a big job, and it really matters. So now, we want to turn to our guest, because everyone doesn't have an opportunity to get inside a school and get to know some of the incredible people who are working with our children to help them reach this academic success. We are joined today by Dr. Tony Watlington, Chief of Schools for Guilford County Schools. Thank you, Dr. Watlington, for joining us. We're going to ask Dr. Watlington a few questions um, and then maybe if we've got some time after the meeting, he can hang around <coughs> if you have your own questions. So, you want to? Sure, I'll come around if you want. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Dr. Watlington has been with the district for 25 years. After college and an internship at the United States State Department, he joined the district as a teacher, a social studies teacher, I believe. Um, he has served as a curriculum specialist, an elementary, high school, and early college principal, and in, se and in senior strategic planning and project, project management roles. Say that three times fast. So for the past three years, he has served as the chief of schools. He directs all staffs, programs, and services in all 126 schools to ensure academic accountability. That's a huge job, a huge job. So, Dr. Watlington, I'd like to start by asking you to tell us how you decided to become an educator and why have you stayed with it 
given the climate and the challenges? Well, good morning again. Thank you very much for having me this morning. Uh, when I was in school, I grew up in the eastern part of North Carolina, from down the east, as we say. Uh, my father uh, met my mother at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Uh, I was actually born in Fort, at Fort Dix in New Jersey. But uh, growing up in uh, eastern North Carolina uh, during some of those years, uh, I was always interested in history. So uh, I went to college at A&T, uh, had a chancellor scholarship, and wanted to study history. And after I uh, finished my degree in history, I went off to Ohio, the Ohio State University uh, to study. Uh, we didn't win the championship, I was so disappointed. But, uh, uh, went off to study uh, history because I thought, well, maybe I'll be a history professor and teach history. Or, and then I got this crazy idea after doing this internship at the U.S. Department of State about uh, going to law school. And uh, I applied to two law schools and got on the waiting list. I only applied to two. They were uh, Georgetown University, because I thought I'd maybe work in the Foreign Service or something like that, and uh, UNC Chapel Hill, and I got on the waiting list, and that's probably the best thing that ever happened. They didn't, they didn't admit me. So I got on the waiting list, uh, went off, and uh, but I, I came back to Greensboro and began teaching, and I found that I really liked not just history, but the opportunity to help transform young people's lives. And it just stuck with me ever since. And so I made the absolute best decision. Somebody made a joke about lawyers earlier, but uh, I'm glad I didn't become one. I became a teacher and educator. But uh, my son is now uh, graduating this semester uh, from North Carolina a and and is, is going to law school. So, Thank you very much. So we know that schools are places for students to learn and grow. But how do we know if learning and growth are happening and happen, happening equitably for all students? And what do you do or we do as a district to ensure that the teachers are prepared and students are learning? I will tell you that the number one indicator if students are learning in the Guilford County Schools is the slide that was up here earlier. Uh, we are so proud that this past school year, there were improvements in uh, reading, math, and science at every grade level, every subject, and for every subgroup, every group of students. Uh, that story just does not get told enough. No matter how much we say it, no matter how much we send it out to the local press or in social media, there's this perception, there's this strong perception nationally that American public schools just are not as good as they need to be. Now, when you ask people, what do you think about when the, whether it's a Gallup poll, Kaplan poll, the Pew Center, it didn't matter who, who surveys uh, citizens, when you ask them how good are public schools, they say, well, we don't think they're very good compared to Western Europe and some other places. But then when you ask people about their child's school and their specific child's teacher, <clears throat> they give much, very, much higher ratings. And that's very interesting given this phenomenon in our county where 75% upwards of 75% of the residents don't have kids in public schools. So I think that the, the data clearly shows that our kids are learning. Have we closed those achievement gaps between uh, particularly black and white and white and Hispanic students? No. Um, will it close in the next five years? No. Are we narrowing those gaps? Yes. The last thing I want to say about that, and this is so important, when you think about achievement gaps, and I'll do this quickly because I want to be able to get to question, other questions. And I want to say this really quickly. When you think about achievement gaps, particularly between white and African American students, it's really important to remember that the first Africans came to this country in 1619, which is 400 years ago this year. When you really think about it, up until 1964, with the passage of the Civil Rights Act, and the following year, the Voting Rights Act in 1965 under President Lyndon Johnson, 87% of that time for that group of students in this country has been without the protection of civil rights under uh, slavery, sharecropping, and Jim Crow segregation. Only 13% of that historical experience has been at a time where voting rights and educational opportunities were protected by the federal government. So we're still early in this process when you look at it at that point. So the achievement gaps won't close in two years or four years, but they are narrowing, as you saw in that uh, graduation rate over the past 10 years. And we're chipping away at that, uh, 
that gap in academic performance. How can we support it? Absolutely support the teaching profession. We've got to get more highly qualified, talented people who want to go into education. We've got to pay them well. We've got to advocate for public policy that continues to pay them for advanced degrees and for salary increases and just support the overall profession of teaching, one of the most noble professions we have. Dr. White, I want you guys to know that he's awesome <laughs> and that the district is populated by people equally as passionate and smart and motivated as Dr. Watlington. It's fantastic. And I want you guys, I got to go back to this slide. This kind of success does not happen by accident. This is from planning, it's um, professional development. This is huge, because when you're looking at numbers that, that big, they don't move, um, they don't move a lot. They move a little bit. So to make such a big leap is huge for everybody. So anyway, I'll get off my soapbox, because clearly, <laughs> But I do want you to know we're on a tight time schedule, so I'm going to stop. But um, can you? I sure can. He can be around afterwards if you have a specific question you'd like to ask. So, thank you so much. I appreciate you. So, from kindergarten through the 12th grade, a child spends less than 2,275 days in school. So we're asking educators to take children who don't know their colors, they can barely recognize letters, and in those 2,200 days, turn them into functioning young adults ready to go to work, to college, or into the military to serve our and protect and defend our country. That's 2,200 days. That's not really a lot. So that underscores for us that we all need to be engaged in this process of educating students. So every day in classrooms across the district, the future of our community is being shaped. We need your help to help make sure the future for our children is bright, for the children and for the community. Here are a few ways you can get involved. Number one, you can host a presentation like this. Emily and I will take this on the road to wherever you are, um, truly anywhere. We do this work in community this work being educating our children, and it's important for us all to sit down and talk together, to get to know each other, kind of like we've done today. That's an important form of advocacy. If you're interested, holler at one of us here. We'll help you. Um, another thing you can do is to give, to donate to the Teacher Supply Warehouse. Every dollar you donate to GEA makes an impact. $64.08 will sponsor one teacher's visit to the warehouse and provide a GCS classroom with $150 worth of supplies. You can donate online or you can fill out the card that's at your table. Um, or if you have hosted a supply drive for us previously, that makes a huge impact. Supply drives help us keep the shelves of our teacher supply warehouse stocked, stocked with supplies. You can also sign up for GEA's newsletter. That's the least you can do, right? Um, GEA pulls together the best research-based information from local and state and national experts about ex education and sends it to you in an easy-to-read format. We won't bug you, we promise. Just to sign up, just leave your business card at your table. You can always find out, oh, also join us for the Education Summit on April 2nd at the Cory uh, Convention Center. That's a good time to get to know a little more about what's going on and get to know the people <coughs> in the school system. You can always find out more information about GEA by going to our website, geanc.org, or following us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Thank you so much for having us today. Thank you, Dr. Watlington, for spending you. your time here. You. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Uh, I think we all know that really, um, <laughs> 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 um, if you really want to promote Greensboro or make Greensboro you know, a fantastic place that companies want to come, bring their business, have the number one school district in the area, you know what I mean? 
Um, my parents moved to Richardson, North Carolina, partly because the school district was so fantastic. So uh, I know that that people that do have their kids in school, and, and not only that, you know, it's important for them, but it's also important for all of us. It's not just a thing that you kind of get your kids through school and then forget about it. So please, thank you so much for the work that you're doing. Thank you, Dr. Wildington. By the way, I've got one other job for you to do real quick. You could pull a ticket for us for our <coughs> Queen of Hearts draft. Congratulations, Doctor. Another career. Just read the last four numbers on there. Last four digits are six, three, three, one. Oh, man. <laughs> six, three, three, one. Somebody's a winner. <laughs> you not. Left. Left. Yeah, we came in right after me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're adjourned. See you next week. Oh, you got to get two like